Hello everyone, are you ready for another adventure? It's me, Woken. I'm back with another Dragalia Lost video. Today we're going to be going over some units that are coming with the Gala Dragalia Remix. Go over them, see what they do. Chances are these units are going to be extremely good. I have not seen them yet, but I'm going to assume because Anniversary is coming pretty soon, close to the end of September, any unit that's going to be coming out here is going to be kind of crazy, so... That's going to be today's video. I hope you like it. If you do, you can leave a like. Comment and subscribe. Now let's get into it. So first we've got Undercover Grace. Jesus. Grace is looking great here. Also kind of already makes me feel the last time we got a Grace. A lot of people, uh, I don't think underestimates the right word. I think they didn't, some people didn't, some people definitely knew she was about to be busted and some other people like... We're going like, hey, I'm interested to see how she goes, and she completely changed the meta from then out. So obviously that's going to happen again, right? With Undercover Grace, that's the only thing that can happen. Alright, let's see what uh, her adventure details here. Posing as a researcher from the syndicate she left behind, Grace infiltrates their ranks in the aim of atoning for the sins of her and her late husband, committed in their employ. Wielding a sword he designed, she works to stop the evil organization. Soul depri Deprivation, shareable 5, deals damage to surrounding enemies and reduces their strength. Uh, damage is 2,200 over 1 hit, 3,000 energy, 7,350 energy, and strength loss is 10%. Okay. Very simple skill. To be fair, the skill, um, the skill can be deceptive, um, deceptively good. For example, the light unit who I cannot remember, Mordecai? Yeah, I think Mordecai has something similar. It really does actually help if there's ever a boss that just has so much attack that you just need to lower down their strength a little bit. Or if you're a new player, the strength minus 10% is a very nice, like, small... It's a small debuff, but still. it's a With the right prints in every other unit, it can be a lot. Trust me. Flame Tongue Unbound deals damage to multiple targets and enemies near those targets and grants the user a defense amp. This skill can only be used when the user has at least one soul seal, and using it will consume all soul seals, then deals hits and grants amps equal- Wow, and grants amps? Equal to the number of soul seals consumed? Damage 1000 over one hit, 6000 energy, defense- If this was for the attack amp, this this skill would be amazing. <laughs> Alright, co ability. Dragon Haze 15%. Flame HP below 40%, strength equals 15%. Double Edge Revelation 2 grants the user a soul seal when soul deprivation connects with enemies. The buff effects are based on the number of soul seals the user has up to a maximum of 4. Increase the damage dealt by the user's attack by 10%. Increase the damage dealt by the user's attack by 15% when there's 2. Increases 20% and increases the damage dealt by the user's attack by 80% but the user will take damage equal to 12% of the maximum HP of every attack. All seal seals will be lost upon shape shifting. Good to keep in mind. Stun resistance 100%. Def uh, team defense amp equals HP regen 2. Huh. Interesting. In theory, she makes it, it makes it sound like she would be. First of all, this ability right here. So let's see. A skill energy required is 3,000. So for 6,000, 9,000, 12,000 skill energy. That will give you enough to get four stacks, I think. And then you can use a skill and get complete defense amp. <laughs> That's kind of crazy. I mean, you could, let's see, you could always do it ever. It depends, actually, on how many other people in the team have a defense amp together with it. Maybe you only need two or something like that. But still, I think there's something interesting about this unit. I'm not 100% sure she's good enough to actually go for <laughs> That's something that I can't really make the judgment so close to anniversary. But I actually kind of do like this mechanic that she's got. It's very interesting. It's maybe the most interesting amp unit I've seen in a while because she actually gives a full amp if you play her right. Uh, if I'm reading this right, yeah. The skill can only be used when the user has at least one soul seal and using it will consume all soul seals. Then deal hits and grants amp equal to the number of soul seals consumed. So if you, can, if you get four, that should give you enough for a max defense amp then. I think that's what I'm taking it as. But of course, maybe sometimes you, maybe this is something you use after you want to shapeshift, because you have to also remember Flame has access to Mars, so she would be able to get these skills back immediately if she so wanted. 
Of course, you wouldn't want to use the skill 2 maybe right away, depending on some stuff, but you could definitely at least get Soul Deprivation back. So, hmm. Interesting unit. Interesting unit for sure. I hope the people who are going to be pulling and get her, I want to see how they do, and I want to see how that goes, but I actually kind of like what she's doing. Not enough to kind of go out and get it. Actually, I'm also kind of curious how much Flame Tongue. It's actually very nice to have an AoE for the, um, uh, not the Agido, the Dominion. Because that Dominion for fire, there's a lot of enemies everywhere, so if it deals a lot of damage to a bunch of foes, it could actually be pretty nice for cleaning up, I think. Alright, let's go into the second unit, shall we? Ooh, come on, come on. Farron. Let's go, little barb. It's worm binding time. A fiercely positive and good-natured young man who possesses the power to fuse with a dragon. After receiving the boon, burden, from the dastardly syndicate, he vows to fight his former captor so that no one will suffer like he did. Mighty protector deals damage to enemies directly ahead, grants the user a defense amp, and partially fills the user's dragon drive gauge. During the dragon drive gauge's damage will be decreased as the user's HP decreases. During Dragon Drive, damage will be decreased as the user's HP to wait. Isn't that the opposite? During Dragon Drive, damage will, de will be decreased as the user's... Usually you want your HP to be super low. <laughs> if I'm reading this right anyway. Damage 400 over 5 hits. Skin energy requires 2,860. During Dragon Drive, it's 520 over 5 hits, 2,860 skill energy, same uh, amount of skill energy. Dragon Drive energy gained is 300, max damage modifier reduced HP, damage is 90%. Jesus, I guess that's how much it can kind of go. Okay. No Holds Bard consumes the entire Dragon Drive gauge and restores HP to user based on the amount consumed. During Dragon Drive, consum consumes some of the user's Dragon Drive gauge, deals damage to enemy directly ahead, then partially fills the skill gauge for the skill. Damage will be decreased as the user's HP decreases. Recover potency. Recovers up to an additional 140% of max HP. Skill energy required is 10,725. During Dragon Drive, its damage is 3,250 over one hit. Takes 10 the same amount of skill energy. It consumes 1,500 dra Dragon Drive energy. Skill effect, skill prep potency is 50%, match damage identifier, reduce HP, it's minus 90%. Crit rate 10%, light HP uh, 80% equals shadow resistance 6%. Worm Bond Shell 2 grants the user a Dragon Drive gauge and changes the shapeshift button to a Dragon Drive button. Dragon Drive grants the following effects, the user's sand attacks and force strikes are changed, the damage is increased as the user's HP decreases. Yeah, that's right. And fill the enemies. It fills the user's dragon drive gauge if connect. The user's defense is increased by 20%. Curse resistance 100%. Right hand dragon 2 gradually fills the user's dragon drive gauge automatically when they have a team defense amp. This guy is weird. He's, I think, the only dragon drive character that wants to be basically at always at max HP at any given time. Most dragon drive characters usually usually, at least from the Syndicate ones, benefit from having lower HP, I think. Actually, let me make sure that's right. Let me look at them. Maybe I'm wrong. Okay, here I have Bolina. Um, damage will be increased as the user's HP decreases up to 5 hits. During Dragon Drive, damage will be decreased as the user's HP decreases. That's... okay. So you just want him always at 100% HP at any given time. That seems kind of hard for a Dragon Drive character, I'm not- I'm gonna be honest. He must be dealing so much damage that they feel the need to do this to them? Well, I don't know, sometimes they kind of just make a unit very weird. Look at, um, Kid Ranzel. I don't know what the hell they were thinking with that guy. He's built on crits, but he has so negative- so many negatives that makes it hard for him to crit. Obviously his crit damage must be amazing. Oops, it's not. I don't know what the hell happened there. I'm more interested, maybe because it is a Dragon Drive character though, I have more faith in them being able to make it deal a lot of damage, so I guess it's another wait and see on this one. And in terms of the Gala units that are coming back for this, we got Gala Muscula. He does lose all his abilities from Sinister Domain, so some something to keep in mind, at least he still did last I checked. To be fair, so does Laxi, but Laxi got a Spiral to help with that. God, it's such a bummer. And speaking of another unit, just get completely useless. Galathor, not useful in any form. 
specifically for anything that is like uh, nihility in it. Anything with nihility based content, you may as well not even fucking run this guy. So fucking useless, it's unbelievable. All of this ability, it's great when not using a unit that is under nihility, because nihility nukes this from the fucking sky. <laughs> There's zero reason to use Thor in Nihility. So here's my thing. Right now, I need to see more of these two guys. If you're a fan of, obviously, Grace, then go for Grace. This is going to be your best time. She's going to be lost to the Disney vault. So if you absolutely love Grace, I say go for her. If you absolutely love Farron, go for him. If you absolutely love Mascula, go for him. If you absolutely love Thor, I think you will agree with me that I think they need to buff Thor in some way. And if you don't agree with me on that, then I guess we can just agree to disagree on that. But in terms of should you summon, I kind of feel like no. But I also think the smarter thing to do is to wait and see after some people actually use them. And see how good they are. Because if it turns out that Grace is busted or uh, Farron is busted, might not be a bad idea to kind of pick them up if you're interested. But in terms for someone like me though, I'm saving everything at this point, so... That's what I'm going to be doing, so best of luck with everyone out there if you are going to be summoning, though. But uh, that's the end of today's video, man. Two at least interesting units in some way. One being not what I expected from a Dragon Drive, and the other one having some cool Defense Amp stuff. Uh, so that's nice, at least. But until next time, everyone, good luck, happy savings, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace out!